Hey guys, good evening everybody fam, welcome back to our channel, how is everyone doing, good afternoon, I should always hello to, there's an ad that usually shows, when I start the show, I hope people are watching it too, some people will just be skipping all these ads, if you are skipping ads, you are not helping me. Oh, hey, Joe, help our ministry. Oh, watch, oh. Even if you don't watch it fully, if you can watch it full, if you can't, at least watch up to some seconds. Hey, Joe, they are usually very short. If you don't watch, we don't get any coins. That's how we get coins. I salute everybody. Oh, now welcome. Yeah. As it is now, oh, I'm just going to have to be doing, you know, the time that I can do. You know, before now, I was very, very religious in my timing and the dates, but, um, but all day long, no. So, where we are now, because I've got a lot going on, and because I still want to at least not be scarce, still be showing up for you guys to discuss this really vital topics i'm just gonna do when i can if people cannot join maybe because of work or whatever they can always watch playback it's fine thank you so much everyone thanks for your understanding thanks for your love and support please give us a thumbs up as you're coming in i appreciate you guys so over the weekend the whole of Abbasanjo internet, as Augusta God would say, was flooded with this story of Alima and Apostle. Hmm. This story is a story that keeps giving. I remember we talked about this a while ago. We we're basically talking about the lessons, you know, all this Nollywood, celebrities, entertainment industry, and the pressure for them to represent a certain kind of lifestyle and how some of them, you know, the extracurriculum activities that they have to do. And I understand it's not only men, it's not only women now. Men too, you know. A lot going on in that industry. There's so much going on in that industry, my people. The pressure is real. Okay? Augusta, I just mentioned your name. How you day? Nice to see you, my dear. In fact, I know about that to download the video. Now, from your video, I want your own one you show. That's where I'm going to play it from. Because I've been busy. Mm -hmm. So, tonight, I'm going to be looking at it from another angle. We did talk about... You know, in the previous video that we talked about this matter, Alima's matter and the other Ghanaian actress. Now, we don't get mental health problem now. That video was very, very long. And we're basically talking about all this lifestyle, expensive lifestyle. Where best go? Wear one clothes, only once. You know where I'm again. If you wear them, the fans go, they ask you, say, you they repeat clothes. Hmm. I'm a ring con. Me, I never see weapons go carry money, go boutique, go buy clothes. You go wear only once, you know where I'm again. I said, yes, so nobody can put pressure on me. Okay? Mm hmm Any celebrity where let them put pressure on Nana in Sabi? Oh, my yeah, I see you, my darling. How you day? Welcome, oh. Nice to see you. Mm hmm You can't hear this. <laughs> you can't hear this. <laughs> If people can't hear this, maybe they watch ad now. Which I'm here to tell you now. We we'll see. Thank you, my darling. I'm on the most see. So I'm gonna be looking at it from a different angle because I watched two videos about it. I watched Augusta Gold's one and I watched a man of prestige today. I didn't watch Allah's um the whole video because it was long. I think it did almost three hours. Because Allah has a style of doing his video. He usually just he will be playing it and making commentary along the way. He will pause and make commentary. And if a video is long, wow, it does take a lot of time. Yeah, I don't have that much time today. 
because I've decided this year that I'm not going to be doing long videos because it's starting to affect my, my sitting down was getting too much from last year. I wasn't aware of it. So now I'm going to be very conscious of it. An hour and a half max, I'm out. So if you want to join us, I will just share the link immediately I start or at some point. Then people can just join because usually people will wait. I'll keep my analysis short as much as possible because talk, you know, they finish. No matter how we sit down, talk, you know, they finish. There's still a lot that needs to be said, said about a particular topic. So, yeah. <laughs> Junior is like, Bobby, I'm eating Gugura and Ekpa. No, it's not Gugura and Ekpa. Sorry. Can you hear it? Oh, my goodness. Is this your yeah, microphone? Am I Binu? It's not Gugura. It's the snail from that stew that I made yesterday. Yeah. Me and Snail, eh? we five, five and six. Now, Snail, like the chop. Oh. I don't chop and finish. Eh, she? <laughs> right. The angle I want to look at it from is from the angle of... Um, you know, when people come from families where there is no much money, okay? And this will apply to a majority of us as Africans. How many of us are born with the silver spoon? That's why we work hard. We put ourselves through school. Our parents money to put us through school or to learn a form of trade, business, or whatever, so that at least the heavens can smile on us and, you know, get rid of that Lack that is in the family. Hmm. Eh, Amati, you had a truckload of snail delivered today. Ah, Mumbo Lodo, eh? You, you invited me now. You didn't know that you invited me, Amati. Oh, come on, me. Me and snails. I'm coming to your house. Maybe I go know your house. Don't worry. Thank you very much. Just keep my own aside, though. You shouldn't touch it. Eh, <laughs> So, I, I, I mean, the pressure is always there for, for the children to be the one that will bring the family out of poverty. It's just the way, it's not right, but it is what we have that we are working with in Africa. I can't really blame the parents because they didn't have the opportunity. Some of them didn't go to school. So it is a burden on a lot of people from families where they feel like, now me, the prosperity of this family rests on me. Hmm? Ah, Mati, Bami, come on, yo. Ni kon kabo, mi no mbo. Mumbo on le. I'm coming to take my own snails and every other thing that is from Ninja. It is a heavy load, though. It's a heavy burden. A lot of us bear it. I'm lucky because me, I have so many elder ones, so I didn't feel it much. I only have one year younger. One younger one. So, they no burn me till my parents don't burn, they won't claim belly. Man, they bought me. So I can't say I really inherited a lot of that, you know, family respons responsibility. I only have one younger one. So, but some of you have, you are first born, you know, you come from big families. And before you are even an adult, you have been told that you need to take care of your children, your younger ones. You have need to take care of your parents. It's a lot. So that's the angle I want to look at it from because there was something Alima said. I'll play you guys the video. I'm not going to play all of it. I think it's about 10 minutes part of it that I saw. On Osta, on Gosta Go that will play, but before I play that video, I want you guys to take a look at this woman. This is Alima before all this drama started, before she became sick. Just take a look at her, and then you will see what has become of her. I mean, I pray for her that God should heal her, but I think she's. You know, when you say that prayer, that though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I think she's been through the shadow of shadow of everything you can think of she's been through a lot and the story just keeps unfolding different angles of it look at her just look at her you see she was a very beautiful girl very very beautiful actor you know victory in nigerian movies back then but unfortunately she got into this i don't know whether to call it relationship or entanglement whatever to call it but according to her, she was in a relationship with Aposto for six years. So let me play some part of it for context for those of you who are not on social medium so that you will see. She said quite a lot. This interview was on Gis Lover for two days. Princess was the one interviewing her. Although I can't really say it's an interview because it was kind of a, it, it was a Q&A. Like, 
she was asking her question and trying to analyze. She made the best of the of you know the situation. It was on on Saturday. It was on on I think it's the first, first Saturday or Friday night or Saturday, and then I saw another video again yesterday. So this is just a clip of it. It's not the full one. A lot of people have seen it, but this is let's just listen to this. So you hear what she has to say, and then we'll talk about it. With me, even while I was um, oh that's the dangerous part of it. And he was telling me he, he can't sleep with any other person, that's why. And that because it's me, you know, he's okay with it. I I am just, I am not, I, I, I it, the whole thing caught me unaware, and I was naive. I did not really, and I wasn't a spiritual person, I didn't know if it was love, I didn't know what it was. But because she told me, you know, I'm the only person and he can't do anything like this with another person while I was bleeding. And now this was, this was how, how, how far after he started? Was it a month after, two months after, or when you just, you know, you know when you just started? At that time, even at that time, when I'm on my regular period, he does that. Wow. You understand? So it, let me pause to say something here. So this is Alima Abubakar, the actress who, you know, was basically giving the tea about her alleged relationship with Apostle, right? Mm. So she said quite a lot, as you are going to see. Like I said, the interviews was two days. But the, I, I, I mean, I want to acknowledge the fact that she took some responsibility for the part she played. But when I listen to her, I can still see the fact that is a situation of her saying, oh, they did this to me. It's almost like she had no choice in the matter. You know how she was saying now that, oh, he was sleeping with me when I was on my period. Okay. And even when the illness started, because apparently it's a period that never stops. That's the illness she said she had for about how many years. Okay. And that the man was still sleeping with her. So I'm thinking... It, 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 did you have a choice in this matter or was this forced on you? Because we talked about accountability the other day and I explained to you guys that women, it is time for us to start being accountable for our own actions. It is easy for you to look at the other person to say, oh, you are responsible for this. You did this to me, but you are not a baby. You are a grown woman. You can say no. And this is where I'm coming from. Okay. Is not to shade her or anything. I'm so I'm I'm sure she's she has whatever reason she has for you know being with him. Okay, like some people say she's a Muslim. Maybe he thought you know she thought he was going to marry her second wife because she said that you know she never knew he was a pastor and all that. I'm not going into that aspect of him being a man of God. No, let's look at it from purely a transactional relationship point of view, whereby he's a man, a married man dating this actress who was well known in, in Nollywood, a celebrity, beautiful girl. I think there was a lot of transaction going on there. Okay. So she was sleeping with him and getting a lot of coins. I'm talking about millions. So when she was saying something, like, oh, he was still sleeping with me at this point. I'm thinking, did you have a choice in the matter? Or was this just, no, a, a blessing is saying she did not have a choice. Are you saying she didn't have a choice blessing? What am I saying? Let me look at what blessing is saying. Blessing says she had a choice, except if she was under witchcraft or continued manipulation. Okay. That's a point. It's valid. Eh? <laughs> but come on, guys. Come on. We are talking about a relationship of six years. If you are ill, you are still giving him kerewa. Because there was something she said along the way that you're going to listen to. And like I said, I'm not saying this because, uh, you know, the person that they're talking about is my, I'm a fan. No, I, no. I'm, I'm saying this because I want us women to learn, especially women. Because it's easy for women to always say, oh, I'm a victim. He did this to me. No, you had a part to play in it. Please. The reason why I'm saying is that as, 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 uh, Two years ago, just two years ago, she said that her dad was ill and she was still collecting money. And I'm like, what? After everything you've been through? Really? Okay. 
Let me just play it up because I can't do Ola style. Ola, Ola, Ola is strong. He's a man. I don't have that strength. There is nothing up for him. When you said, you made a statement. You said anytime you were with him, anytime you people had intercourse, you bled. Yeah, every time you are. Um, didn't that lose any red flag? Did you ask him any questions? That's what what did you say? When we started going out, I was dreaming of him sleeping with me. Oh my. So sometimes I would I was, I don't know, I noticed a shadow, it would be like, you know, I just saw someone, you know, even in Asaba, when I went to shoot, um, Mr. Titi, the chief director, and hear me with that. I couldn't act. I couldn't read my lines. My director said, I'm not giving him what he wants. And then they had to call him as the next person on my phone, because I was, you know, I was almost running mad. Something was going on, and my head was really banging, like I was going to run mad. So they had to call him. They gave him 15 missed calls. He didn't pick with my phone. My mother had to give him 15 missed calls before he called. Then he now called the location. They now asked him to talk to me so that I can act because I came to act in Asaba. When I got there, something entered me. Since then till today, like, I don't want to visit there because, you know, I don't know if, I, I just don't know. I called him and he just said, uh, maybe I need rest. Like, sorry, cannot come out of his mouth. Or what happened, or you know, he's always not knowing and all that. So So she said something entered her body when she went to act a film in Asaba. And she believes that it was spiritual manipulation, right? And I'm not saying that's not true. Who are we to challenge what she's saying? This is this is her truth, and we always say women should speak, people should speak their truth. Yeah. Uh so she's saying that something entered her. And she alleges that Apostle is responsible for this thing that entered her, right? That is where the Wala started. Her illness started from there, right? Okay. So my mother had to, you know, ask me to come to the village. I went to the village. We started going about acting, you know, and all that. And he kept telling me that he was coming. That's the funny part of it. You get. So we kept waiting. And then I started taking English um, medicine to stop it because okay. if i sit down there is no way i will not flood that place with blood it was, right. it was that bad it, it was, was that bad i couldn't sit if you go back to all the pictures i snapped on the red carpet you will see me with bloated tummy with skin cuts those periods were the period i was going through hell i was going through it did his wife know, know about you i don't know i don't know I don't know. So she never made contact. What I've seen and from what I've seen and what I'm still saying, he was living uh, many lives because um, it's not double life again. It's many lives because I'm not the only one apparently. Oh, some, are, some are some are dead for, for real. The, the people I know, some are dead. But I don't understand. Please come again. Like you the know? people I know that know that he did it. That, that yes. That was bleeding too. She died. Oh the other one had the spinal cord. She had an accident. She was bleeding too. So there's a chronicles of, as we all know, this person, the allegations are not new. Anybody who's ever been on social media will be aware that there's always been Stephanie Zone is all over the internet. Okay. So what she's saying here is, you know, actually something that we, we can verify that other people have come out to say. Even the Ghana, Ghana girl was saying that, oh, they will sleep with you and give you peanuts and they will take your glory. You know, we had a conversation about taking glory, yeah, once upon a time, and it wasn't a pretty one. We got into it and the argument was fierce for and against. We are not going to debate that because you can't win in an argument about spirituality and spiritualism, okay? There's no winner or losers. So I'm not even going to touch that. I'm taking her word on it. If she says you know, that something happened to her because she had Kerewa with this apostle, then so be it, all right? But I'm looking at it from ordinary relationship between man and woman or, you know, ordinary people and the lessons we can learn from Alima's story. Because this story is very, very deep. There are different angles to it. And she also said that some of the people that were involved with him, some of them are even no more. They've deleted and these things have happened to them. Now something they do. Now I know what they do. So me no you come sit down and talk, say that thing not do you. Because I don't know what they do you. Mm. 
let us be careful. Let us be careful. All that glitters is not gold. All that glitters is not gold, though. Hmm. All right. You know, they all came to me. The other one is a musician. She's late now. I want to face him in court if we are going to go so that, you know, we can have a really nice, um, um, you know, um, uh, what do you call it? Trial. You have time to defend yourself. The, the, this person, this musician came to you and, you know, spoke to he you told, about him. He told me already that he told her we are dating, so she's going to come and act like my friend, which is the same thing he ever did. So, you know, um, my dear, this thing is deep. Wow. So the other person is now on the wheelchair. Yes. Oh. I have and their interviews. You have their interviews. Good. So I, I was... Every once in a while, something comes along so masterful, it leaves you... I want to ask something before you... So while you were at the location, please make me understand, you were constantly bleeding. Yes, continuously. And I couldn't read my script. I could not me because he lost too much blood. Yes, so I couldn't I couldn't say anything and you know it was just shameful. Something that you've been doing for years. Somebody there is a way apostle can approach Halima and say to this matter. Augusta don't come with the analysis, so make us see the video don't finish. No, never finish. Thanks. Okay. With all the lies you told me, and and just the stardom, so I know you go enjoy the stardom. Augusta. Just come for the thing. How you should, instead of him to take accountability, I am taking my own. Why can't you just burden to die? I like the fact that she says she's been accountable now. for her own action. Yeah, everywhere doing like this right now. Ah, we will just pick her up. Ah, I was waiting for you. I was waiting to see you. Ma, come at Lake. I promise you, Johnson. In fact, if I don't see you that much, where you talk, say you won't see me for uh, that spot there, they don't burn you where Johnson. And you, Stella, make sure you collect your own. Because if I don't see Stella's own Johnson, let me tell you, you have to bring a private jet to my house and pick me up. I need to talk about Stella, my people. Stella. I have to talk about her. Now she be that Stella, the mukokoku, whatever she calls herself. You see, eh, Stella, I've had personal encounter with Stella. If Alima is saying that Stella is not credible as a blogger, that she's collecting money from people to cast her, because I've seen articles that she's written far back as how many years ago saying that Alima was trying to set a post to up and all that. I believe it because of my personal experience with Stella. This lady, I can't call her a lady, she's not a lady. You see this woman, they call Stella, so she's two-faced, two-faced, double-edged, ikani. I'm telling you, I had an encounter with her. If you take a story to her, I took a story to her, she tried to, she tried to disappear that story. This style I want to see so. She says to the blogger, oh. then she will take the story, twist it when she don't collect money, clean out. So if Alima is saying that Stella jumped into it, she says she knows Stella very, very well. And particular, she even called another on her freeze. Now don't say freeze, now I post a friend. <laughs> Yay, wala <well>, de <laughs> If you see the way that they drag and for this lover, eh? Oh, do me, you know? Usually, I don't like somebody being dragged, especially if it's a woman. And I don't like it. She's not the one that made herself. Alima said she met her husband in Afro introduction. She married one German man. The man is a drunk. Oh, she said a lot about Stella. But you know what? She brought it on herself. Because Stella is double-faced. She's She has zero credibility and she's two-faced. Uh, I don't even know the word to use to describe her. As you see and so. This woman. No, 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 no. I like I like Danny. Mm. I like Danny. So, 
they are all involved in this matter. Apparently, they are involved. Alima even said that the 5 million that uh, Apostle gave her two years ago, Stella kept 2.5 and gave her 2.5. Shoraye, how did she, did, she, did, she, did she become a player in this matter? What is your business in this? Shabi, you call yourself a journalist. She's the one that's always claiming I'm a journalist. I'm a journalist. Well, if you went to school of journalism, then the first thing they should have taught you is to stay neutral. But you never do. Me, I have my own personal beef with Stella. So if I'm coming across like this, you know where I'm coming from. Because she did me dirty. She did. Okay. Let's continue. Losers. Yes, of course. I didn't know he was married. I knew in the process. You know with somebody. Went, okay, all the fuck. Make it just go like that. If you want to, can you go? If I won't go, that's why you go call my mother. Talk something. I will come back again. Now me will come the bag. I won't go again. You go. Do you know how long he's been dragging me? Forget that thing, whether I marry or not marry. I have said I am sorry about that. We're talking about the way forget you. Somebody said that Stella is denying it. And I'm telling you now categorically. Uh, Annie Marie. I'm telling you now categorically that Stella is a two-faced liar. She's a liar. But it's okay. She don't collect. Maybe she don't collect. I don't even, I don't need to say anything because just love her. I mean, drag and wear wear. As you see, and so she's not a better person. Olori buru kuwa yato ni Stella. I'm telling you. Anyway, let's come back to Alima because I don't want to get, in, get into Stella. I'm waiting for her. She said that, uh, Alima said that she didn't know that uh, Apostle is married. Hmm? I don't believe that. I will tell you why. She said in the interview that Apostle told her that he was separated from his wife and she kept advising him to go back to the wife. This is why I don't believe it. I don't believe it because in Nigeria, most of these big girls in quotes, that date all these men, now married men, dating married men, is because the thing is outside now, she's trying to look good, that's why she's saying, she didn't know, it's a lie, she knew he was married, she didn't care, okay, I mean, the one when the apostle woman will talk him, but the one when we, as women, when we do something, when we know, say, oh, junti, one thing, tori pe, ashiriti tu, afefeti fe, afirifuru adie, let's say it, she knew, Alima knew very well that Apostle was married. She didn't care. You know why? Because it was a transactional relationship. Alima is a Muslim. She can become wife number two. And she also said that Apostle gave her a ring. A promise ring. And she also said that all the time she got pregnant for him, that he wanted her to keep, allegedly, keep all the pregnancies. She knew. So I just wanted to put that out there. Now she's saying she didn't know. She says she also said that she doesn't know that Apostle is a pastor. The Apostle told her he's a motivational speaker. He's a Bible study teacher. I mean, come on. Come on. Are we talking about 1920 or 1980 when I was growing up in Nigeria? Or when I was in university in Nigeria in the 90s when there was no internet? This is the day of a internet. Anybody you want to find out if the person is a public person or somebody that is rich and well-to-do, all you need to do is put the name on Google. What are you telling me? She's saying that she doesn't know. Like I said, it's all about accountability, please, ladies. If I'm standing this way, it's not because I want to throw Alima under the bus. You guys know. She suffered enough. And I'm wishing that God will send her healing, total deliverance from whatever she's going through. But we are talking about owning our own ish. When we get into this entanglement and all this nonsensical relationship because of what we want to get from it. When you are gas, no contact say, and eh, now only you go come the blame only the man. She took some accountability. She, she said, oh, that she's asked God for forgiveness. And if God can forgive her, who am I? What is my own? Okay. They were dating for six years. This lady said, I never knew where she was living, where the, where the man was living. Princess kept asking her that question because as a Yoruba again, I'm sure Princess was like, eh, you mean you dated for six years? You never know where he lives? She said, no, I don't know where he lives. That uh, uh, he told me he was living in Potakot. Me, and uh, he got an apartment for us. Who dates a man and you don't know where that man is putting his head down? You don't know whether he's a ghost. And you know we have our ghost stories in Nigeria. 
You never, you've never even surprised him to say, let me even go and see what he's doing. And you just dated him for six years? Come on. You knew. She knew that Apostle was married. Okay? So I don't believe that story that I didn't know. And I never visited him because Princess kept asking her that question. How come you never know? You never visited him. She said, eh, I was busy. No, I beg. Let's stop. As Allah will say, let's stop the cap. <laughs> Allah, you need to borrow me those your emo, uh, what they call them sand, sand check. Let's stop the cap. Stop the cap. <laughs> oh my God. Let's continue. You have to talk to Do not tell me I am I am wrong. I am wrong. Wrong, 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 wrong. Okay. How, how, how will I know? Okay, so there's a question here. 2009. I... There is no way I knew he was a pastor. 2009. Let them bring out the uh, whatever that is out. This picture here was 2000 and was that's the one I used in 2000, 20, 2013 for his birthday. This is from him. When did I start knowing he was a pastor? When he sent she has she has a lot of uh, I will give her this this lady. When did you know? Yes. Because that's the she question. She has receipts. That she has, yes, he has a that's lot of receipts. Knew. And he told me he was a motivational speaker. What year was this? What year did it tell you that he's the most? Uh, this was twenty eleven. Okay. I mean, will I go and start buying his book? You can see that he's he's, he's not even looking like the same person obviously this picture you can see that is a long time ago yeah i see i see it so why would i have all this okay so, so did he just you. say did he you yesterday you remember you mentioned him saying also that was yeah, a sunday school, school teacher. teacher and oil and gas sunday school teacher oil and gas those are the things he said he was doing and i don't know uh, and did he, to search the sunday school i'm not a christian which year and this he, was still... when we started day 21st he was now bringing the cd for me to see how he was preaching in the sunday school okay because he wants me to see it and i keep asking him is it not a sin for you to be doing what you're doing he said it's human if any of you who know johnson here is watching you will know that this is what he says i am human do you know what Alima has a lot of receipts, okay? So personally, I believe that, you know, she's speaking her truth about this issue of their alleged relationship with Apostle. But so she's not a Christian, right? Yeah, I give it to her. She's not a Christian. But Nigeria is not... Nigeria is big, but Nigeria is not that big. The kind of congregation that a Sunday school will be, is it the same kind of congregation that that massive church is in Auchi? Where's my Auchi grandmother? I have an Auchi grandmother here. Is our people matter where? <laughs> oh my God, she said that. Apostle said that he was a Sunday school teacher. Then he said he was a motivational speaker. <laughs> he was popular in Nigeria. He may not be popular on the internet. You, I mean, come on. You know, I believe what all the receipts she's showing, but I also believe that she was enjoying all the money that Apostle was showering her with. And so, saying things like, I didn't know he was married, I didn't know he was a pastor, I didn't know this, I didn't know that, is convenient. That's my own personal, that's what I believe personally, okay? Everybody can have their own, have their own personal belief as long as, you know, you are not insulting anybody, okay? This is my own personal belief about this whole matter. Alima has a lot of evidence. She has a lot of... That's why if I if I were people that are advising Apostle, I would be careful in, you know, going to court because <laughs> this lady... Eh, you know what? When I saw the interview, I was like, this lady wants to put this thing out because she, now she feels that she's got nothing to lose. That, okay, if I delete, in case I buy, at least I've spoken my truth. She started the interview by saying, I want to warn people. This is me trying to warn people. So, she has a lot. And you know what they say, when somebody has nothing to lose, they are willing, they will do anything. Mm, yeah, they will do anything. They will do anything. So, there are bits and pieces of the story, you know, that we need to like question like, hmm, really? Okay. It's all right.
let's finish that story let's finish her narration and then we'll come and discuss so this halimama okay it don't finish you uh -huh. okay Agasta Gold, we don't see your face. Thank you very much for sharing with us. So these are the issues. Like I said, what me I want to talk about in this story is about the area that I'm interested in in this whole story, whether they were in a relationship or not. Mm -hmm. Is uh, is uh, that one now? I think that she has said a long time ago. She has a lot of you know evidence to support that argument right they are both adults and i want to believe that they are consenting adults as 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 well the only reason why this story has been giving us so much information and it keeps giving 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 is because alima has been sick she's been sick for a while during the interview i did watch one of the interview where she said that two years ago that her father was sick and she was trying you know to reach out to him to see if she can get money. I think that's when the issue of uh, Alabosi, Stella Dimuko, that's when it came up. Stella is number one. Alabosi, Ayatonu, Uni Ran, Uni Dotsi, Alaye Baje. Yeah. That's when it came up. So I'm thinking if this man has done all these things to you, and I'm not saying he didn't do it, oh, please. I'm not saying that he's a saint or he didn't do it because Stephanie's own. Guys, look at this. Look at Alima. There was a point, there was a time that Alima's belly was swelling. Alima came on social media and lied that she was pregnant. She she acknowledged that in the interview. Her belly was swelling because of this ailment. It's a strange ailment. She doesn't understand. Mm -hmm. And she told her fans on social media that she was pregnant. Of course, she was not pregnant. Let me remove this thing so you can see it. Her belly was big. It was swelling like somebody that is properly, properly expecting, like a nursing mother. His illness, look at this, from this to this. I think she's wearing the same dress, by the way. Yeah, that's the same dress. So she's been through hell and back. I see, you know, I have she has my empathy. But the learning there for, for us is about be careful. All that glitters is not gold. Okay? We are not there when the thing they were, they were dating and they were sending money. But I when she said that two years ago her father had a stroke and she was trying to, you know, get money and opposed to send her money, I was like, what? After all you've been through with this man, you you, you are like that he, he used you. She basically said that the man used her for whatever. Spiritual, whatever. I don't know what to call it. How do you go back to that same person and be asking them for money two years ago? She's been sick for a long, longer than that. So I don't understand. It's not fibroid, please. All you nurses and whatever you are, don't diagnose her. She knows what she has. It's not fibroids. She says she's been everywhere. They say she's even gone to India. My link is in the comment section. If you want to join the conversation, I've, I've finished all my talking. I cannot talk anymore now. This is all I have to say about it. Mm. Okay. Convenant what she said. Halima is saying the truth. The way you said it in capital is like you were there. Are you in a relationship with them? Sile wasn't popular then. His ministry was five years old. They had just launched as uh, Celebration TV then. You are saying it emphatically in capital. Worship, uh, covenant worship, or covenanted worship, as if you were there. Be careful what you are affirming, because you were not there. You can say you think she's saying the truth. You cannot say emphatically that she's saying the truth. Okay? Because none of us were, was there. Hmm? So a lot of people on the internet have been trying to diagnose her, whether she has fibroids, she has this. She says she's done MRI, what do you guys call it? MRI scan. She's done this, she's done that. Nothing comes up. Somebody, anything sick. I don't understand Nigerians. Somebody that is sick is saying that it's not, they, they couldn't pick up anything medically that is spiritual. You people are still trying to diagnose her. You know more than her, Dr. Abi. Okay, continue. Internet doctor. Ekushe. 
continue to diagnose her. She used her mouth to say that they were not able to find anything. She's gone everywhere. She even it went to, she she even stopped. She said she stopped bleeding now, and that was because she went to uh what's it called uh a spiritual home. Do you know where she's been? You don't know where she's been. Four years, opinionated Jen, thank you. For four years, this lady has been having the issue of, you know, non-stop period. And you think you're going to diagnose her? I, I, you know, I don't like it when people do that in online. You come and start putting your half-baked half medical knowledge on somebody's diagnosis that you don't know. Do you know her? Well, you people should be coming down. Just be coming down. Happy New Year, sir. Hello, Sister B. How are you? I'm fine, sir. Welcome. Oh, my goodness. I love, I say, I have to come in on this issue because I I miss you. I've been working on this, so I miss you so much, but I'll do your playback. Thank you, so sir. How's everything? I'm good, sir. All right. Oh, I'm just going to share to support you in this. You need, like you said before, you know, remember I told you how you take your time off. Maybe you need a form of exercising too, because like for me, I go yes. to the gym three three yes. times in a week. So that try. has helped. So oh, I tell you what, I'm yeah. living the better part of my life. I will try I'm, that gym thing. I've tried it on quite a day. No, you gotta listen. It's a mindset, my sister. Mm, it's mm. a mindset and it's a discipline because yeah. it's hard. It is hard, it's not easy, it's a mindset, but it will help to you know. Uh, on this Salima case, system, I run into it on Facebook yesterday. I was like, it was, I don't know. Sometimes I look like it is like, it takes two to tango. Mm -hmm. You see, but, and at the same time, we cannot say that our story is not culpable or it's not true. Absolutely. It's her truth. Yeah. Yeah, it's the truth. And yeah, what it's her truth. It, yeah. Yes. What I found about it too, she has a lot of evidence. Yes, and the she only does. thing that, like you said, is that she needs somebody who will advise her to stop playing or stop showing all her evidence because that's what they're going to use against her if, if this case goes to court because they're going to say it's character assassination. But he's already he's already sued her for one billion naira uh -huh. for uh, I think it's a defamation, defamation of, character. of character. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I'm talking about. And like you said, this and I'm Sister B, I love your show and God keep blessing you. And Amen. I know you are not doing it for yourself because you are educating a lot of us and it's particularly women. Because now you what you say today is like we have accountability, we have a you know, whatever we do, we cannot just say, Oh, so and so do it. They did they did it on me. Women, yeah. you can't keep saying they did it to me. Uh -huh. You had a part to play in it, please. You got a part to play. What is your own share responsibility? Because somebody even said that it was Okwade. Okay. Okay. Yeah, let me make you laugh. Somebody in the comment section said that she did not have, she didn't have any choice in it because uh, they did the Jew on her. Now that's why she kept going back to sleep with him. Really? Hmm. So that means yeah. you are a zombie. Yeah. You are telling me she became a zombie because of the juju. And I'm not saying that Apostle is not doing whatever he's doing to her. But if you are saying that she kept going back all the time because uh, they did uh, juju on her, they manipulated her, that means she's a zombie. Yeah, yeah. And the thing is that that bothers me is that who are the soul people surrounding her that every time she makes this allegation or something like this and they can't tell her, oh, be careful. Don't no, go back. You know what I think, Uncle I just want to for you. This is what I believe. I think Alima, because she suffered. Oh, poor girl, she suffered. Okay. Mm, she has suffered a lot. She's been ill for over three years, and the illness is very mysterious. Okay, she's been up. She's been everywhere, and there's no solution. Thank God, she now said that you know the bleeding has stopped, but she's still not fine. No, she's not. So I can see that. I think, yeah, that's why she, I think me personally thinking now is that. She's come out now to say, you know what, F it. I'm going to say this and I'm ready to go. But I yeah. must warn other people yeah. that this is what happened to me. Yeah. And I know what, what I found out too that she's coming out. I may be wrong in my own assumption. She's coming out because she has she has a feeling something is coming down. She may disappear because I had a lot of cases about this man. People disappear. 
So I think she has that feeling like, even though I disappear, at yes. least my case yes. is in the public domain. Yes, yes. So people will know something happened to me. People will quickly get the idea and they will quickly cry out on behalf of her. I think yeah. so. I think she knows something is coming down. She knows yeah. that. She's aware something is coming down. All I yeah. need to be like, she needs, she's sick. You can see in all her, everything, I mean, even though she gets better, she needs therapy. She needs counseling. Huh, she needs huh. everything that this woman needs. Look at that. She looks so beautiful from grace. Yes, to yes, yes. You know from what she grace. said, Uncle Ade? Let me, let me shock you again. Wow. You know what Alima said? She said that she was praying for Allah Anu, a helper. And that's why I wanted us to talk about this, you know, shouldering all your family responsibility. In Nigeria, a lot of women now are the ones that carry all the family wahala. Even those who come abroad, the family, everything rests on them. You have to build the house for your father. You have to make sure that your, your younger ones are educated. You have to. This is, and I wanted to look at this case from that angle. It's not healthy. You become the sacrificial lamb for that yes. family. Yes, yes. You because if Alima is still going to her post to two years ago, even after she's been sick because her father is ill. What does that tell me? It tells me that there was no help for anyway. She's the only one that they are looking up to pay. Baba Esiko, even though you are you you yourself, oh badun, but you still need to go and bring money to take care of your father. It's very Can you see? that society, I don't know that culture, is very depressing and very uh, I don't know how we can get over it. I'm going through it too because I'm a discount of the family because I just tell them. I'm no longer playing that game. Uh, you know, you, you are the role of the family. You pay for everything. Enough is enough. I, I need to live my own life. Absolutely. I I became, yeah, Absolutely. I, 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 nobody wants to talk to me. I said, that's fine. That's fine. No, should we be more? Should we be more? No, I'm seeing your sister. Babe. You know what I'm talking about. But, you know, should we uh, be more? Should we be more? Yes. Be like. <laughs> because all that be is a title that they give to you is to manipulate you, to use you. I, I hear you, my brother. I hear you. And at the end of the day, what do you gain out of it? They just give you a headache. You walk, walk, walk so hard. You give, give, give. You have nothing in return. Anything nothing. we give in Nigeria you, is not you the You become the sacrificial lamb. At the end of the day, Sherry, all the people that carry, and this is what I want Uber the Farm to learn from tonight, because we can talk about it from different aspects. But I chose this one because I know a lot of us in the diaspora, as you always say on Gwade, we are sitting on this table. Yeah? Mm. And I want you to know that if you buy today, mm, because you are doing whatever, you are the light in your family, you are the one that is the carrying the shoulder, you are the one that only you have gone to abroad in all your generation, you are the Olori Ebi for Nkwade uh, in his own case, your family will continue to enjoy their lives. Thank you, sister. Life will go on. The world will not stop. The world will never stop if you, you disappear in this world. The world will never stop. So that's the lesson, for, especially we in diaspora, we have to learn because we carry too much body and it's killing us. It's running a lot of people to mental problems, Sister B. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. I think, I think I think Alima had a lot of that pressure on her. She had a lot of pressure to help the family. Yes. And that's why she kept going back. Because I'm thinking, if this man is as evil as you think, as you say he is, why do you keep going back? She had to because... Yes, because he's, he's a source. Sister hmm. B, he's a source. Chai. And then she has no alternative. He's a source. Hmm. And we can sit down here and blame her. Why is she going back? Why is she doing yeah, that? Like yeah, yeah. Yes. She, she felt a sense of duty and responsibility exactly. to her family. Because... Like I always tell people, you don't know what I'm going through unless you wear my shoes. You never know what I'm going through unless you wear my shoes. Then you can tell me what is next to do. Because every time we come, yes, we have feelings. We, are, we have our own perspective. That's why we are human. We have a perspective. We have our own idea. But it does not mean that what somebody else is going through, uh, you know, you have a ultimate answer to that. No, so we it's don't. All, yeah, it's all about the money. I mean, with Alima now, at that point, because the apostle allegedly was giving her millions. Uncle Ade, he was giving her millions. 
Of course. So it was solving a lot of problems. Yeah. So she felt like, oh, I said she even said it. I'm repeating it again. She said, I prayed. And when he came, I thought this is the answer to my prayer. Wow. So when the money started popping in, somebody said in the comment section, pay. Well, what do you need to ask question for again when there's money? Of course. Mm -hmm. yeah, we are talking true. about Nigeria and Kwadeo. We are not yeah. talking about Obodo Ibo, where there is some level of support for you, whatever. This is Niger. Money for hand, back for grand. That's Niger. Well, Sister B, let me ask you a question, though, before I go. Why is it that this man, so-called man of God, has so much control? Because this is not the only women coming forward though. There's still several people coming forward. Oh, what yes. is this so particular about this gentleman? I don't know. I think, you know what? This is what I think. So many things that have been done in dark is coming to light now. Okay. Alima would not have spoken okay. if she wasn't ill. Okay. She would never have spoken. Okay. The only reason why she's talking is because she's ill. She's desperate. You know, she needs help. And she's you know, she's like, you know what? She it. feel lonely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's like, F it. This is it. I'm just going to say it all. Whatever comes now, I'm ready. Wow. Yeah. All right, my sister. Thank you so much for Thank allowing you. me Thank you. We appreciate Keep you. you yes. Keep your service to the you, family sir. for me. Thank God bless you. you. Bye -bye. Thank you. That is Uncle Ade. Give it up for Uncle Ade. Hey, Allah, you need to give me some of those, your, your sound. Uncle Ade, I... Is an elder here. We respect him. We love him very much. God bless you, honey babe. What do you have to say? Good evening, Welcome, my darling. Good it was evening. me. That... Good evening. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, my darling. Yeah, it was me that said something about Stella. I didn't say that I believed her. I just happened to listen to the interview. I will. I think I have this catchphrase that I always say: accountability, accountability, accountability. Yes. I think... <laughs> For me personally, they both need to take accountability she because you don't... apparently she has apparently she has. Alima, she has taken some accountability, but not enough. That's to me, why not I was... because I think yeah. for me, I have this thing about bringing out certain issues into the public because personally, if she wasn't sick, she wouldn't personally be talking about it in public. And I do mm -hmm. understand what you, you said that she's doing it to help. I said with my British accent, effort of bringing him down. That's her mentality. What is very, very distasteful, because at the end of the day, no one forced her to stay with someone for six, six years or however long she's been in that relationship. And I believe that just because of money, you would now go, go back to someone. I don't understand it. Obviously, I'm not brought up in that environment, so I don't personally understand it. But it goes back to what you said before about this black, um, this tax that we all seem to pay. In black terms tax. Of being, Say yeah. it, my darling. It's black. They call it black, black tax. tax. Unfortunately, yeah. I, it doesn't, um, it doesn't it really affect, you. affect me. But the yeah. funny thing, I had a conversation with my mom just yesterday. You are so we lucky, my about, darling. You don't, you don't yeah. know how lucky you are. <laughs> I suppose so. We're talking about you know, things like that. And she was saying that she's going to do her will. And obviously, the, I'm the eldest. I have a sister who's middle and then um, uh, my brother. And we was talking about the will. And obviously, she has certain properties. And that's the type of, com you know, we're lucky in a sense that we don't have to deal with that black tax and everything. Well, that is something that my mum made a decision that she's not going to rely on the three of us. She's going to make sure she plans for her retirement and her future. She's retired now. And she's living her best life. She goes on holidays every single time. And yes, we help her. We help her financially. But the reliance isn't on all of us to help her. And Do you understand what I mean? That's because, honey, babe, your mom is in the diaspora. That's the difference. Yes. But she's very traditional in certain ways. But obviously in this in this particular aspect she is she's very full forward thinking she's always telling me that make sure you have pl uh, make sure you have a will make sure you have investments so that you don't rely on your children because obviously i have two boys so mm -hmm. we're very forward thinking in terms of finances i think it's very very sad that because of the situation where money is an issue for this lady that is why she has to me forfeited her self-respect in order to be in, with, in order to be in a relationship with someone that she knows is very toxic, according to everything that I've been hearing, yeah, it's very, very. Oh, sorry. 
Sorry, sorry. Sorry. I do apologize. Sorry, that's my laptop going off. Yes. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) I do apologize. Sorry. Funny babe, the way you apologize, I've never seen. Your your (laughs) level of apology is too much. (laughs) The last time when we had that bass boss, you kept apologizing. I know people, I know, I know it's an issue for people. So I I, I know it is. You've apologized, say no. And to be I have to apologize and say it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. So back to what I said, I think it's, I think I know you're going to say to me that it's very different in the UK to compared to Nigeria, but it's about a woman having self-respect. And I know it's difficult in Nigeria having our own income, whether it's a small business or something so that she will not be in this situation. I know she was an actress and unfortunately with her sickness, she wasn't able to act anymore. Hence the reason for you know, obviously having to do what she's doing. But I feel and that... She's very... I, new. She's still... She, I don't think she's still well. No. And that's my issue. Why are you focusing on disparaging this man? I'm not saying he's innocent. I don't really... I'm not... I don't want to talk about him. I'm talking about the fact that she should be recuperating and focusing on her recovery no, rather I than agree disparaging... With her on that. No, I agree with her on that. Okay, she's okay. Saying... She yes. said that the reason why she decided to do this live is okay. because she wants to warn other people. Of course, yeah, which is true. I mean, everybody, I mean, I, I have my own issue. Where I had a very toxic relationship. But like I said to you, you know, the last time I came online, I mentioned to you that I took accountability and I took myself out of that relationship. Even if I was broke today, I would not go back to that relationship because I know the type of person that I am. Do you hmm. understand what I mean? Yeah. But not every not everybody is like me. I understand it's different because I'm in the UK and they are kind of a safety net, if you know, in terms of benefits and housing and whatever. I do understand because I know people will come for me regarding that. But I still think that as women, this is a lesson for all of us uh-huh. that be very careful the type of relationship that you get yourself into. Uh-huh. And as much and you shouldn't be in a relationship because of benefits. Yeah. Because of money, because he's famous or whatever, whatever, whatever. You're being in that relationship because you want to be in it. And yeah. once you see the red flags, carry your load. Yeah. With your, you know, if you have kids, go on, finish over. And don't look back. Yeah, I don't believe that it's very tasteful to go back to someone that you know is toxic because you need money. Money is, yeah. not, ev- and money is not everything. Your life is more important. Absolutely. You're right, my darling. So again, You're for right. me, accountability, accountability, accountability. And that's all I will say, Auntie B. I love you. We're going to give you that. Pleasure. Pleasure. You know what? You are going to be our accountability prefect in this in, in, the, in this blog. You're going to be the accountability prefect. Whenever we're talking about accountability, we say, where is Honey Babe? Honey Babe! I don't have a problem, Auntie B. Accountability prefect, come forward. I love you. Thank you very much. You are right. You are absolutely right. See, that's why I wanted to talk about this matter from the perspective of, you know, the black tax. Alima was sick. I know what I'm talking about. Alima was sick, but her father had a stroke and she still felt that she's the one that has the responsibility of looking for money to take care of her father. Uh Uh-uh. And so, because of this heavy burden, the responsibility she felt on her shoulder, babe, ah, I'm a logo, you want an actress, you want a celebrity, you are the one that is known. She still went back. It's more, almost like going back to your vomit. Because you already made allegation that this man is the one that is making me, you know, have this spiritual attack. I can't act anymore. I can't do this. You went back because you felt the need to get money. And that's so that you can help your family. Wow. It's not easy. Oh. This this girl has been through a lot. Honesty. She's been she's been through a lot. Mm? Life with now to say why is Stella coming with some with glasses? Let me let me ask her. I don't know why she's coming with glasses. She came with glasses. She's gonna stay there. Look for. Be good. Welcome. <laughs> good evening sister b can you hear hello, me hello how are you my brother <laughs> i'm fine thank you and you and Not everybody happy new year mm. i wish you the same calling from nigeria so oh, let's go to the team. what are you doing there no 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 you, i'm on you holiday know. I'm on yeah, holiday. Walk, 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 walk. The way you are standing now. The, uh, 
you know, you know, you know, we know each other the way you are standing. Ah, yes, I'm on holiday. I'm on holiday. You're not doing anything you shouldn't be doing. What am I mean? No, 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 I'm not. I'm not. Sure? I'm, I'm, I'm on holiday. Yes, okay. Enjoy yourself. Know. No, Europe Thank is very you. stressful. I don't blame you for going on. Holidays. Very, 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 very. I hope, you're, I hope you're okay. I'm glad that you are still joining the show. You're still listening to us, you know, after everything. Yes. I'm a member. I have to. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you, my brother. Member. Thank you. Yeah. How is your family? So, well, they are, they are fine. We are, we are, are, we are trying our best. Are, are they still over there? Yes. Have you seen them since they went over there? Not yet. Okay. We'll talk. Let's I'm planning, talk. I'm planning to. Okay. Mm, let's talk. Do you have my new number? I don't think you have my new number. No, because I can't really get you on the uh, WhatsApp. I don't have uh, your new no, number. No, you are one person. I never want to lose contact with you, one mommy, because you know the kind of love I have for you, eh? <laughs> is deep. Thank you very much. That I know. Me. I have That's deep love me. for you, one mommy, because you know you are very real. You know. Thank you very much. Uh, so I'm gonna put the number. Okay, where is it? Okay, carry on. I'll put it on the screen. Oh. So you take a screenshot and contact All right. me. Mm. I just have a little a little thing to contribute. One, we can see where um, our um, um, first offering goes into and our tithe. We can mm -hmm. see where it goes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, secondly, um, I have to lay some blame on our some women. You understand? Mm. Because you know, like the other girl said just now, you know sh he is a, a pastor. Maybe mm -hmm. he comes to you, you, you know he's a pastor, and you agreed to move with him. Now you have a problem, some kind, you are publicizing publicize the whole issue. Mm. You understand? Yeah. So it, it's a blame, blame game. Uh, mm. As a pastor, Pastor Suleiman, if it is true, you're not supposed to do such a thing because you are in the house of God. Just if you can't stay, just leave the house of God, go and live your life as you want. But as far as you're there, you are special. You are not supposed to uh, portray such a um, character. So that is my contribution today. Thank you very much. We have to be careful and be mindful of what we do. Absolutely. We have to be oh, because uh, yes. this life... Eh? Mm -hmm. This life. Yes. Yeah. We have Thank to be... The Bible says we should watch and pray so that yeah. we will not fall into temptation. The Bible yes. never says we will not fall into temptation, no. Say, it comes. Yeah, yeah. Watch and pray. It comes. Watch and in... pray so that you will not fall into temptation because the temptation is going to be there. It must. It mm. must come. When it comes, it, it, uh, like like Christ says, um, "I'm the Son of God." You just tell the Satan, "No, I can't do that." If you can do that, then you'll be free. But if you can, if you contemplate more, you might we might be defeated. So, yeah, we have to be careful. Yeah. Well, mommy, for your sake, I put my number there. Yeah, take it and say hi to me on WhatsApp, okay? You All know, right, I'm very interested in your matter because you know I love you as a brother, and yeah, I really you respect you. Yeah, be safe in Nigeria and see you soon, okay? Uh, yeah, thank you very much. All bye bye. Right, bye. Bye. Yeah. bye. <laughs> wow, well, mommy, it's been almost one year, and every time I hear his voice, I laugh. <laughs> How many of you remember one mommy? Do you remember him? <laughs> oh my God. One mommy is dealing with his own demons. May the Lord help him. We tried, me and my sister in Europe, we tried, we tried, we tried, but the wife, oh Jesus, stubborn, very stubborn. But Omato Ye, Omato Ye, she will soon understand, pay. Kaki no be leather. Okay, Toby, hi. Hello, Auntie B. Welcome, How are you? my How? darling. I'm good. How is my namesake? Your namesake is fine. He's all right. How are you? <laughs> I'm fine. Um, Auntie B, um, I'm going to try and analyze this from a different perspective. Okay. I, I've listened to Halima. I mean, even before now, I listened to her. Mm -hmm. I listened to Stephanie. I've listened to, you know, 
the other girls, some of the other all people the, that all the, all the victims or survivors, I will say that have been able to, yeah, that have been bold enough to come out. And sometimes, you know, while listening to them, I got overwhelmed, overwhelmed mm -hmm. with gratitude to God. You know, sometimes I listen to them and I said, ha, God, I'm, I'm so privileged. I'm so grateful because it could have been me. It could have been anybody. Do you understand what I mean? Yes, absolutely. I mean, a, a lot of us can, we can stand tall and say, oh, no, stop. Nobody should do this. Nobody should do that. Nobody should do. But, you know, not until you wear their shoes. I mean, I'm not excusing their bad behavior. There are some of them. That, uh -huh. that do it outrightly out of greed. Uh -huh. There are some of them that do these things out of desperation, necessity. like yeah, yeah. Necessity. necessity. If yeah. I don't I do think, it, yeah. Do you understand? I think falls into that category. She she had to do it. I think so. Mm. Because if despite the fact that she was going through so much, mm -hmm. you know, somebody that was literally dying. But it still called on her to say, look, your father your is father also is dying. Sick. You still need to go hey. out there to go do what Told you have to I do. When I saw that, I was like, what? Really? She's sick already. She's been sick with the issue of blood. You people still want her to save her father. To save her what? father, yeah. So when I, when I listened to her say that, you know, I was just overwhelmed. And I was like, God, I thank you for my own life. Because it, it could have been me. It could have been. Do you understand? I'm I'm grateful that I have not had to go through. I mean, everybody has their own story. You will talk about how our mothers suffered, our fathers suffered. They had to sell this. They had to sell that. But thank God we didn't have to pass through this to put Amen. food on the table. Amen. You know, so that's that's one area. So based on that, you know, the fact that she has come out to say this happened. You know, her story may be disjointed. I mean, this happened a long time ago. She may not, mm -hmm. you know, she may say this here, say this here, say this here. But the bottom line is there was a relationship between two people. Yeah. And one person is feeling like, look, help me. You you yeah. used me at some point. So yeah. yeah. Save my life. I think mm -hmm. that's the bone of contention here. You yeah. know, and then I think what is making Alima come out is the fact that the guy was denying her at some point. And she's thinking, I gave you six years of my life. How can you now say you don't know me? But do you think, do you think this person that she was in a relationship with, haven't said that, I never knew even where he lives. I never visited him. I didn't know he was a man of God. I didn't know he was a pastor. He told me he was this, he was that. Do you think... She's feeling entitled, or do you think she's right to be demanding that he should come and take care of her? Knowing she's, that this was according to what Ola said. Ola said something today when I was watching Man of Prestige. He said something. He said, Alima, do you realize that you were a side chick? Six years of side chick. So the question I'm asking is, is this a sense of, like you said, oh, I gave you six years of my life. And I deserve you to care about my well-being, to take care of me, or is this a sense of entitlement? She's she's obviously feeling like she's entitled, and and the the thing is, you know, depending on how their relationship went, we've pointed out some things. Number one, how can yeah. you be with somebody for six years and you say that you don't even know where they live? She says she doesn't know where um, they live. How can you be with somebody for six years and then you said, okay, no, she said, she said um, she didn't know he was married until their second year, mm -hmm. you know, and by that time, you know, she probably already saw him as a meal ticket anyway, and she's thinking, cool, it doesn't well, matter. I think he was really giving good money. Yeah, he was giving big, big money. Yes. So she probably felt like as long as there was food on her table, it didn't matter anymore. You understand? And then for her not to know where he lived or where he lives, you know, and being with him for six years, it also tells you the kind of relationship that they had. So maybe it was that kind of relationship where he goes away, anytime he needs her, he comes back. He probably sends her a text message and says, meet me somewhere. He probably calls her and says, meet me at this place, meet me at that place. Do you understand? So if he wasn't meeting her in her own house, 
he was meeting her in other places. So that tells you a lot about the type of relationship they had. And then for her to say again that they were engaged several times, and then he also gave her a promise watch or something. I've never heard of a promise watch, but yeah, she said a promise watch. You know, when you hear, I mean, why are you engaging me two times? If you engage me once, why are you engaging me a second time? And then you do it up to six, seven times. Oh, what is that? Like engaging for what purpose? Do you understand what I mean? So it tells you, hello, are you there? Hello, Auntie B? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. I, oh thought, I thought I was talking to myself. Toby, yeah. yeah but you, you understand what I mean? So it tells you the type of me? relationship. Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you now. Hello, Toby. Are you there? <laughs> yes, I can hear you. I'm here, oh, Toby. I can't hear you anymore. <laughs> Toby is gone. Okay. Can, All right. Can you hear me? Toby. If you can hear me, I can, I can hear, hear you. you. Thank you so much for your contribution. I mean, you kind of summarized it. Yeah. You summarized it very neatly. It's not easy. I feel like Alima had a lot on her. Mm. Can you hear her? I can't anymore. Okay, Rachel. Rachel, welcome. Thank you so much, Toby. Rachel. Okay. Hi, Auntie B. Hi, Auntie B. I'm joining from the United States. Uh -uh. Can Can you hear me? My network is is busy. Oh. I can't hear anybody anymore. Oh God, what's happened now? Hello. I've not had this problem in a long time. Can you hear her? Hello. I can't hear anybody anymore. Hello. Can now, you hear me? You have a problem. Some kind. You are. Publicizing, publicizing the whole issue. Um, you understand? Yeah. So, in the time, you are publicizing. Okay, I think I'm I've got some you. network I'm issues here. You. I, mean, you're gonna I don't know what's right happening, now. but I can't hear anybody I'm anymore. I think I've got some network issues here. Hello, Toby. Oh, crap. Yeah, can you hear me now? I don't know why I cannot hear anybody. Hello, Toby. Oh, crap. Yeah, can you hear me now? Okay, I'm hearing you now. Go ahead. Okay, Auntie B. Um, so, um, like I was saying, I mean, okay, I mean, it's, un okay, it's unfortunate now. things have happened for her that, yeah. you know, the way they've happened. But then, like I, like I pointed out earlier, um, I think there is also a fundamental issue when it comes to her family background, you know, because the fact that she she had to go back to him, you know, because she needed help, she needed to, you know, sort out her family. So you begin to ask questions, you know, about what sort of family is that, you know, even if something was happening, you know, this girl is dying, you know, the reason why she's dying, and you still made her go back to that situation you know so that's that's one thing that gives me a lot of concern and and this takes me also back to so many families in nigeria i mean we 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 shouldn't let let go of our of our esteem and of our of our lives basically just because of what we want to eat i mean if we if it happens the first time and we take it to be a mistake or we take it to be that you know a necessity at the time you know, the moment we come out of it, whether good or bad, we shouldn't go back into it. You know, we shouldn't go back into it because you can imagine how messy the whole thing is. And you can imagine if indeed this is spiritual. So you can imagine the weight of this thing on her family. You can imagine how, in, you know, deep her family would, would be in this mess. And to talk about the pastor now, you know, from the stories, from the several stories that have gone around, Apparently, there is a pattern to what this pastor does. And it also looks like most of his victims never actually know that he's a pastor. I mean, I didn't know about him. I lived in Nigeria for so many years. I never knew about him until I moved abroad. I didn't know about him until maybe like 2019 or, you know. 
And, you know, the first time I heard about him, I was like, is he really popular? Popular, and we didn't know him. So I can imagine he's he's also, I'm, I'm sure he also goes out to look for those who know that he's not a, a pastor. Mm. I know a lady, she's not Nigerian, but she told me once about how she met a particular, a popular Nigerian pastor, how she mm. met him at an airport lounge in one of the African countries. And yeah. this guy was hitting on her. And then they mm -hmm. got on a plane. They got on the plane together. And it was hitting on her and hitting on her and hitting on her. And she sent me a message and she was saying, is this not your pastor? Mm. And she's a journalist, you know. So you can imagine if she had decided to blow things out at that time. But she's not Nigerian. She just let it go. Yeah. And this guy mm. was saying to her, oh, he's single, is this, is that, is that. Think he even changed his name. Mm. Do you understand? I don't, I don't know what they look for. I don't know. And, you know, in as much as we, we would say that, oh, these girls as well, what are you looking for? You know this person is married. You know this, you know looking that. For but something. a pastor, you're supposed to be of a higher moral standing. Yeah. On a normal day, when you see girls going into all those things, you are the one who is supposed to call them, caution them, correct them, and, you know, send them back home. Yeah. But instead, That's you're the one who encourages them. You're the one who lures them. And then before yeah. we say ABC Baga, you don't go court. Mm. Before we say anything Baga, they are already in court. They are, you know, you're swinging your victims. One billion, billion, you're, you're one billion naira. Uh -huh. That's a rich do you, know how much, <laughs> do you know how much it would cost to, to even go to court? And then you will pay this block, this block. See, I, I mean, when I heard Stella, I was a Oh, no, I forget about I Stella. Ashamed. I told you now, Stella. Now forget about Stella. Stella is not credible. I confirmed I before I can ashamed. say like this. Before I can say like this, I have confirmed it for myself. Stella is not credible. Uh, Auntie not. B, Auntie B, did you hear Stella say? You know, Stella, Stella just she she literally nailed Suleiman. She literally nailed him because she she made it clear to all of us that they were in a relationship. And then the relationship is over. I didn't and even everybody watch. Has moved on. I didn't even watch, but she's been collecting money. She's been collecting money to, to discredit Alima. It's not today. This girl, and then, this let woman. me tell you something. Let me tell you something. So Stella started by saying that Suleiman is a friend. And then along the line, Freeze said, him and Stella, there was a time they were not talking, that it was Suleiman that reconciled them. Uh -huh. Now, the same Freeze and Stella are the ones that are asking Alima Al to bring evidence if she knows what she's saying Even is correct. The Freeze, the freeze gong, gong, gong. Freeze eats for both sides of the Mahala Tenu journey. He's confirmed it himself. Yes, that day. And he confirmed it. You know, he uh, said Suleiman is his friend. He said Suleiman that, that, oh, that, that he should reconcile uh, him and... He, he came out and, and um, he, built, he built his platform because he said he was telling people, pay, don't pay uh, tight. Can he come, can he come? Nigerian pastors are this and that. But uh, as I said, he fell at the roof right there. Free. No, do you know when, when it comes to... He said, um, Freeze and Stella said something. Stella in particular. Stella said that the rule of journalism is that if the person is your friend... You cover up for the person. She said it now. She said all of these things before answering the question that they took him asked. to enter private jets. Not all what private jets. He lost his senses. Don't forget about that one, Jerry. Anybody can pay his so bill. You be, so you be wondering what exactly. So you can imagine. You can imagine the people the pastor is even bringing to help him do um, PR, to do damage control for him, Mister Pastor. Look. You don't have to be a pastor. Just in case you're listening or your minions are on this page listening on your behalf. Let me tell you something. You don't have to be a pastor. Just be a guy, man. Monday to Friday, walk. Friday night, enter club, groove. You know what, something? Let me tell you something. Guy, let me tell you something, Toby. You want to do. Toby, let me tell you something that uh, Ola said. Man of prestige. If you don't follow him, you better start following him because Ola has too much sense. I appreciate your contribution. God bless you. Ola said that the most influential, when you talk about influence in Nigeria, 
They are, it's not a uh, social media influencers. It's not actors and actresses and all your faith. It's pastors. Pastors are the ones that are the most, because they shape the way people think, the way people behave, everything about your life, they shape it. That's what Man of Prestige said, Ola. And I believe it. So, yeah. Thank you so much. Toby, you speed a lot of beans. A lot of people, you know, we appreciate your contribution. God bless you. Okay, I'm going to take Rachel. Rachel, hi. Hey, nice to be. Can you hear me? I'm trying to because I connected on another device now because my computer, I can't hear from my computer, believe it or not. Oh, okay. But can you hear me now? Yes, I'm hearing you. Come on. Okay. Yeah. So um, I'm calling from the United States, from North Carolina. And um, I would like to reiterate what I think it was the last lady or the one before her, what she had said Probably. earlier. Yeah. Yes. When she said that, you know, we should remember that we're not all from the same background regarding upbringing. Not everybody is privileged. Yeah. So um, what the other caller said, you know, about her mom being retired, putting money aside and all of that. Everybody wishes for that, but not everybody is that lucky. We cannot pick our families, but we can pick our friends. So as hard as it seems, we need to stop building castles in the air and think rainbow grows out of every, you know, part of my French language. Yeah. Um, Halima is not from a well-to-do family, like you said, rightly. And yeah. also maybe she was the breadwinner of her family. She was the breadwinner. It's not maybe. Yeah. She was. Because for her to be this sick, for her family to know about it, and then for her dad to be sick and she still had to go to the same person yeah. who allegedly put her in this position to get yeah. money. Mm -hmm. um, we may all judge in our own way, but we do not wear the shoes. So we don't know where it pinches her. Mm -hmm. Maybe, you know, like the interview on Just Lover, she said, her friends never reached out to her. Some people she considered her friends never reached out to her. Nobody did. Maybe she just said, you know what? F it. This that's is life for you. Know. You, know, you know what, my darling? That's a learning, Rachel. Exactly. That's a yes, learning for everybody listening to this podcast. We have 1,600 people watching, 610. Give us a thumbs up as you are learning the gem. You see, sometimes when we have this big stories, you know, is on social media. We want to talk about it. It's not about the story. It's about what do you learn? When the chips are down, that's when you know who are your friends. Most friends are not friends. So when Alima was saying, oh, my friends didn't call me, I can only call three people or four people. I was like, before I'm call, what were you expecting? You think they are your friends? No, they are not. You thought they were your friends because of the things that you shared, your common interest. You were actresses. You were rolling together. You were living the big life or whatever. But they are not your friends. They are not. Go on, my darling. Let me take the next color. Finish up. Let me take the next two colors so we can round up. Rachel, are you there? Hello, Rachel. I think Rachel is gone now. I can't hear Rachel anymore. Okay, thank you, Rachel. I appreciate you. Right. I'm going to move on now because I want to end in a minute. Mbasi. Hi, Queen B. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. You know, this story is, is as devastated as you can imagine. Yeah. Um. I think... You know, I'm only going to just speak a little on the or the so-called pastors and men of God. I don't know what the religious people. I think the damage, the damage that they are doing to the innocent soul, uh, whether they know it or not, um, it's it's very it's very sad and devastating in a way that people that you will look up to and you want to seek for counseling, you want to seek for guidance, they are the ones that really at the bottom uh, doing the most 
of all this reckless wickedness mm-hmm. to yeah. human soul, right? Yeah. Uh, and you know what? It's not. It's not only in the Christian world. It's in the Muslim world. It's in whatever world of religion. Um, you know, I, I had a one of the this so command of God that came to America a few years ago. Um, you know, this man came here. I'm not lying. He he literally impregnated three people. Nobody one. Saw- I'm not, I'm not kidding. I mean, I know one of these people. I know one of these people happened to be somebody that I know. And the story behind that is they, they pray on them. I'm telling you, they know who the victims are. Once they started talking to you, once they weigh you, they know, they try to size you up. Okay. They want to know what kind of people that you have. Does she even have people, like real people, right? Does she have somebody looking after this, after her? You should have a, uh, a strong support system. They will wear you out before they go in on you. Okay, they just don't do. They 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 are scammers. Let me you know, and it's a big word, but that's the way I just see them. They are scammer prey on innocent it's soul. Everybody. It's not everybody. Let's try not to general generalize. That's that's what I'm working on to ensure that when whenever we talk, let's be specific because it's not all. No, 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 not all, not all. Yeah. absolutely yeah. not. Absolutely, Stop. I'm talking about people like this apostle. Not Stop. Ab- Stop. Of course. Stop. yeah, no, you know. Yeah. Yeah, no, oh, please uh, forgive my uh, ignorance on that, but it's absolutely not. It's not all of them. It's just people like this opposed to that. They use religion as a cover to do their own agenda and, you know, get away with it. I guess my question now is how long this, especially this particular apostle, because his name has been coming on God knows how long. How long this is going to go on just him, him going around, pray on whoever he can place his hands on and nobody government is not doing anything endurance is not doing anything these victims they are not even strong enough to bring him down or they or maybe they have enough evidence or money or support to actually bring him down because at the end of the day who knows who the next victim is on the line right now as we are talking who knows it's not like they're gonna go and say oh you know what i get caught let me stop they never stop they just keep doing it because they have the power, they have the control, they have the avenue, they have people that they, they, you know, it's just the way they roll. And, you know, again, for all the people that knows them, that been around them, and they don't, they don't, they pretend like it's not happening. I don't even know what to say about those people, really. Because, again, the, there are people that are running this, they, they, they are not doing it by themselves. They have other people that they, they use along the way as they are doing their, you know, whatever they are doing, really. It, it's, it's, you know. Thank you so much, Mbasi. Really appreciate your contribution. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, people usually misquote the scriptures that says that the love of money is the root of all evil. It's not money. So people, a lot of people say it's money, but it's not money. It's the love of money. May the Lord guide us. May the Lord help us to make choices. And as I'm going to summarize and end this video tonight, because I'm ending now, yeah, like I said, it's only an hour and a half that I can do. Guys, please, I know a lot of people have that thing that we call black tax. You feel like you are the saving grace for your family, like Alima. You need to save your dad, even when you yourself, you are not well. You need to do this, you need to do that. But... Let me tell you something categorically. If anything happens to you, to bakuleni, to if you buy today, those family, those friends, they will carry on. Some people say somebody was saying that it's fake friends. So what do you think about friendship? <laughs> so you think friendship, all those people you call your friends, you think they are real friends before? Really? You think so? Maybe you need to start reevaluating friendship. Yeah. You never really know your friends until your chips are down. Yeah. So don't think that because uh, everybody likes you now, because you you are everything to them. You They can call you, pick up, you know, you're meeting their needs emotionally, financially, you know. You think you've arrived. Mm-hmm. My people, it is when the chips are down that, uh, see, eh? 
the friends that you have, just don't have any expectations. Love them. You know, do what you need to do as a friend. Be kind, be respectful, be loving, be available. But I tell you, when it chips and down, you will know that. <laughs> friends, not today. Toby, thank you very much. You dashed out with your wisdom. You also dashed out with 20 pounds uh, super chat. I appreciate that. God bless you, my my name, my son's namesake. Thank you. Ejamashora. Don't you are not you cannot sacrifice yourself on the altar of my family needs this. My family need that. The pressure is always there. Molugu. Logo. You are the one. You are the light. You are the beacon in your family. Lorido. If your light quench, another light go rise up. Trust me. Life goes on. Look at Alima now. I don't know how old she is, but I think she's in her maybe mid or late thirties. I don't know. And she wish if she can take this back, she will take it back. Because she said, I had a relationship before this person. Who is going to date her now? I'm sure she still has dreams that, Lord, if you deliver me from this, if I am saved from this tribulation, as a woman, you still have those needs. I want to be married. I want to have children. It's a natural thing for us as women. But who is going to look at her? That's if God even deliver. At, at this point now, she's only praying that God should deliver her and give her life so that she can live and not buy over this wala. It was so bad that she had to go and lie that she's pregnant. When the the tribulation was too much. She was lying. So the lesson I want you guys to take from this tonight is that if you think that you are the Omo logo, you are the one that is the savior, there cannot be two Jesus though for you Christians. Only one. You are a bad and very limited imitation of Jesus. You cannot. Only one savior that took the sins of the world. You try, but you can't, you know. I pray that God gives Alima good health and, you know, sound health. That she'll be all right. Be content. Whatever you have. Don't carry the burden thinking that you are the one that is now. Now they don't get anybody. Now let me. Now let me. If you delete, they will survive. Trust me. Be content. Know they run after all these big men. As they call them for Nigeria, big men. Because they give you big, big money. You they sick. They say they tell you, say your papa gets stroke, me, you go meet big man. The big man, when you say now, it cause you problem. Ah, are you sure? May the Lord help us. Thank you, everybody, for watching. I pray that you know the Lord will give her permanent healing, that she will be well. But you know what? Looking after yourself and putting yourself first, I say it all the time, is not. You're not being wicked or you're not being evil or you're not being, you are preserving yourself. If you buy today, that family will continue. That's all I have to say. I'm back tomorrow. I have a very interesting story tomorrow to share with you guys about in-laws, mother-in-law. <laughs> we have a mother-in-law situation that we want to share tomorrow. So yeah, make it a day with me tomorrow evening and we'll be back. We are not going to be long again. Thank you very much. Give us a thumbs up. We have 1,592 people watching. Give us a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't done so. I love and appreciate you. And I'll see you tomorrow night. God bless you. Thank you, everybody. And I'll see you. God bless you. Bye.